It is one of the most important battles of Indian history. Emperor Ashoka's campaign against Kalinga was so brutal that it became a turning point for him. After this, he gave up violence and decided to walk on the path of Dhamma or Dharma. But have you wondered why Kalinga was so important for Ashoka? Hi, I'm Minnie Menon and I'm going to tell you one of the crucial reasons behind the Battle of Kalinga in 262 BCE. It had as much to do with economics as politics as recent excavations in the region have shown us. The region of Kalinga that we now know as Odisha and some adjoining areas like Shikakulam in Andhra had four great advantages by the time of the Mauryan Empire. It had thick forests, it was rich in alluvial soil ideal for agriculture and it had two important things that any empire builder would have been keen to access – iron ore and ports. What's more, all of this was in close proximity to Patliputra, the capital of the Mauryans. All this made Kalinga very rich and archaeological excavations done recently have shown us what this area or region would have looked like before Ashoka's time. To get a sense of it, you have to head to Shishupalgar, which is in the outskirts of Bhuvaneshwar today. This was once a thriving city, probably one of the biggest of its time. What's more, this was just one of the many cities in the Kalinga of the 3rd century BCE. Archaeologists have found many sites of once thriving cities. Excavations have shown that stretching for about 400 kilometers were large urban cities interspersed with smaller satellite ones. From Radhanagar to the northeast of present-day Bhuvaneshwar to Shishupalgar to Jaugada or Jogar and finally Dantapuri in present-day Srikakulam district of Andhra Pradesh. Between each of these cities was a smaller satellite city, roughly one-fourth the size. Of the lot, Dantapuri was the largest with an 80-meter moat running around its fortification. Archaeologists have also found that all these cities were connected through a network of waterways. Cities like this also thrived because they were also supplying material to busy ports. In the modern period, Tamralipti was the biggest port in the region. But excavations have also found evidence of even older ports around the famous Chilka Lake. And these were part of the very vibrant and lucrative Bay of Bengal trade network that connected Myanmar, Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. Another great port of the ancient world was Kalingapatnam, in present-day Srikakulam district again. For Mauryans, getting the region of Kalinga would have given them access to important ports. It would have also given them access to rich minerals, especially iron ore, which is essential for a standing army and its weaponry. Even today, some of the biggest sources of iron ore are in areas like Mayurbhanj and Singbum, which is ancient Kalinga. Archaeologists and historians who are piecing together the history of the region believe that Kalinga would have had a series of city-states managed by a confederation of tribal chiefs or oligarchs in Ashoka's time. The possible site of the Kalinga war, Dhauli, is just about 15 kilometers away from Chishupalgar, which is on the outskirts of Bhuvaneshwar. From the records that Ashoka left through his edicts, the Kalinga war was bloody. In the Kandahar edict, Ashoka claims that 100,000 people were killed in this battle. But despite the remorse, it's a testimony to Kalinga's great economic value that it was retained by the Mauryans after the battle and divided into two for easier management. Events in history are shaped by so many factors and it is only when you go deeper into its study that you realize the connections. Especially now when we have access to material remains from excavations across Odisha. Sadly, there are very little resources to fund these excavations and lots more needs to be done for us to really understand this very important period in Kalinga and the Indian subcontinent's history. <music>